Hello, friends. Um, thanks for sharing practice with us. This is our uh, a pre-solstice for 2023 um, practice. And um, so those of us here on the Zoom recording, some of us have brought candles to light and you're invited to practice in the dark if, if you're comfortable with that, if you choose to do that. I'm going to light my candle now. I would like to be uh, really in the dark here, but then you might not see me. So that could be odd. Nice. Hmm. So winter solstice is officially tomorrow, Thursday, the 21st and the year 2023. And uh, at 10.27 p.m. in Eastern Standard Time, of course, shifting with different time zones. Winter solstice, as you may well know, is the time of the shortest day of the year and the longest night. And uh, whatever tradition you celebrate with or practice with at this time of year, whether it's Hanukkah or Christmas or Kwanzaa or Santa Lucia, Las Posadas, there's many traditions at this time of year all around the globe. All of us at some point in our ancestry, for some of us maybe further back than we have an awareness of or a connection to, but all of humanity would have at some point practiced and had a deep connection with earth-based spirituality. Spirituality and, and um, sense of meaning and community based on the cycles of the moon and the stars, the sun, the elements, the seasons, the harvest, the time of rest, etc. So, I find this uh, comforting and uh, heartening that, man, maybe it, 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 I don't know how, how fully true it is, but for me, there's a sense that we all have this common ancestry of being connected with the earth and nature as a source of wonder and a source of wisdom uh, and wherever we've gotten to <laughs> mm, that may mm, be fueling fear and separation and uh, judgment and difference it can be helpful to reconnect to what is my what roots are here that and what do they have to teach us um and uh you know i can't even i can't even list them all the the traditions these ancient traditions from all around the world particularly around this one, because this is what we're talking about tonight, winter solstice. So Stonehenge in England, New Newgrange in Ireland, um, even older than Stonehenge. And in Peru, the Nazca lines, these are all things that line up with the winter solstice uh, light. Um, many of the temples in Egypt and uh, 
Angkor Wat in Cambodia, Machu Picchu in Peru, Petra in Jordan, and on and on and on. So um, this is really a reconnecting uh, to um, a global awareness of change and of uh, what the seasons have to teach us. And, uh, you know, with this, this being shortest day, longest night, uh, there can be sometimes in these themes a, a tendency to mm, want to lean towards the light. <laughs> You know, we can kind of make a theme of like turn towards the light or the days are going to get longer now, um, like tomorrow will be the shortest day of the year. And then we're with more light is coming. And those of us who experience seasonal affective uh, disorders, uh, that certainly is a welcome thought, more light. Uh, and Tonight, I would like us to invite and welcome and be curious about the darkness. The darkness, um, not in a negative sense, which is often done with dark and light. And uh, yeah, the, the darkness as generative, the darkness as rest, respite the darkness as this time of germinating that happens in nature it's not it's uh, nature is still alive and it's germinating it's resting it's uh still uh just waiting for for its its change of seasons but not uh not dead and and not negative Hmm. Um, and so with this uh, theme, if we will, of generative and um, germinating, it makes um, brings to mind intention. And uh, in the Dharma, the teachings of the Buddha, wise intention is a part of the a very important part of the middle path, the eightfold path, the path or the the way, the um, the practices that uh, bring us to freedom, freedom from suffering. So intention is a uh, one way that might be helpful to look at this time of quiet, of rest, of darkness of uh, what we are planting what what's germinating what is going to come to light and come to fruition lao, lao tzu says it this way which you you've likely heard Watch your thoughts, for they become your words. Watch your words, for they become your actions. Watch your actions, for they become your habits. Watch your habits, for they become your character. And watch your character, for it becomes your destiny. And in the Dharma, we could add the before that first line of watch your thoughts is um, watch your intentions because before thoughts, before actions, before speech comes intentions. And in the Dharma, we um, there are three wise intentions or skillful, wholesome, onward leading intentions. They are can be worded in the negative or the positive, but they are non-greed, non-hatred, and non-cruelty. So 
non-greed is is um renunciation non-clinging freedom from clinging not clinging and um non-hatred is is uh, cultivation of metta of loving kindness benevolence mm. kindness and non-cruelty they sound similar and it's a little tricky to tease them apart but um it's mm, just the difference between harm and hatred that uh, not acting out of cruelty and um this is can be part of the karuna practice of compassion and good wishing for the ending of suffering for ourselves and each other one of the ways that we can deeply practice with wise intention is through our precepts through our values our ethics and that each of us need to explore for ourselves what are what's your deepest heart and core values that guide you through all of our days and of course in the dharma we as lay people have five precepts that um that really help that really lay the foundation for our intentions and our actions and speech that come from these and our thoughts and so these precepts really um lay the foundation for skillful wholesome thought speech actions and intentions um there we've done practices here and you can find them on the true north insight channel here of uh breaking down each one of these precepts um so I'll just name them in short here. We undertake the training to refrain from harming living beings. We undertake the training to abstain from taking that which is not freely given to us. Stealing, taking, taking more than is needed. We undertake the, the training to speak without harm without being abusive or lying being false speaking untruths undertake the training to refrain from sexuality that is exploitive or abusive or harmful and lastly undertake the training to refrain from intoxicating the mind into a place of heedless behavior non-mindful behavior so all of these when we really practice with these daily would be good <laughs> some people have them by their bedside or taped on the mirror and read them or chant them or practice them before your meditation or just before your day begins to really get your values um informing these seeds of intention which give rise to how we move through the world and you know if, if we have some intention of a, a path of a a direction where we wish our lives this one wild and precious life to go it is fed by intention and if we don't keep fueling that intention germinating it how could we possibly um, make our way there? Hmm. Um, wanted to read. Oh, dogs are yelling. The um this poem is from Wendell Berry. 
It's short and sweet and deep. Uh, which I I I love. It's it's called to know the dark. To go in the dark with a light is to know the light. To know the dark, go dark. Go without sight and find that the dark too blooms and sings and is traveled by dark feet and dark wings. Wendell Berry. You can see if we go into the darkness with a light, we're just knowing the light, really. The we can't the you know literally our eyes wouldn't really adjust to the darkness to be able to to be in in knowing in the dark if there was a light there. We have to go dark, and so I love this poem because it really points to turning towards the darkness, turning towards are these deep intentions, these seeds. What am I really germinating? What am I fueling? As Lao Tzu um, said, um, you know, what is becoming my destiny? And we, we need to turn towards and look closely at what what's planted and what is being germinated. Um, let me just see if there's another thought here that's important at this time. Hmm. I don't think so. Yes, there is. Okay. Haha. <laughs> Inner dialogue out out loud. Fun. <laughs> I'm debating if I'm going to read this poem now or at the end. Both, you say. Yes, good idea. All right. There it is again. So this one is uh, from Rosemary Witola Trummer, and it's called Almost to Solstice, which we are almost to solstice. And it's based on a line from the Smiths, um, there is a light and it never goes out. So Rosemary says, and even in these darkest days, in the darkest rooms, with the darkest thoughts, and the darkest words, with the darkest songs in the dark full ears, and when the darkening dreams waits the darkest fear, even then there's a light and it never goes out. Even then, when the eyes know only doubt, even then, even then, there's a hand eager to spill shine into our cup and all we need to do is drink then pour a bit of shine for someone else. Thank you, Rosemary. Uh, so I'll put all these links down below in the recording. So check that out if you're practicing with us on the YouTube channel. Hmm. All right, so uh, for the practice tonight, I'll, I'll, um, once we settle into our, our darkness and stillness and, and land, um, we will, I will chant um, these precepts. I'll chant them in Pali. If you know them, you're welcome to join. And uh, even if you don't know them, it's good practice to just Mouth along, practice the sounds, um, because you may have an opportunity at another time. Um, so they're the, the five that I listed about undertaking the trainings of no harm. And uh, I'm just going to say them in Pali to connect with some of the um, ancestry of 
of these traditions. And um, then after that, uh, I'll, I'll guide a little bit around um, the precepts with some space uh, after each for kind of a Sylvia Borstein offers his practice as a way of uh, like a self inventory to just check in and see uh, if there's anything here that uh, needs some amends or balancing to just let what what is needed arise. And um, so there'll be some silence in between each of these. Okay, I think that's all for introduction. Let me move some of these bits aside. So as we're getting ready for practice, if you are practicing with us uh, on the recording or here, if you want to have darkness in your space, that might be, might be interesting or helpful. If you want to light a candle, um, Please take a moment to get that for yourself now. These poems are going to be ready. I'm not sure why I'm doing this tonight. It's happening a lot. <laughs> Have a little drink of water. Oh, it's so sweet to see the candles in the on the screen here. Really sweet. Mm. So when you have your space um, in a way that's conducive and supportive for turning attention inward, perhaps in darkness, if that's comfortable for you, not necessary, just whatever feels good. Feel if you are um, practicing in darkness or partial darkness with a candle, how it may invite resting for the eyes. The eyes could just rest closed or downward. And as the eyes come to rest, the, the face feels this reminder of resting. So the tension in the face could start to soften. Feel the darkness inviting mm, as if you're going to enter rest in a wakeful way, in an aware way, inviting awareness to come with us into resting. Inviting peace across and through your expression and your face. And let the shoulder bones rest. Inviting the heart center and belly center to soften and land and rest. Bones feel their heaviness dropping towards earth. And our Attention drops even further down, like these seeds that are germinating. Mm. 
the generative darkness deep in your heart center or deep in the earth. Holding our deepest intentions and values. And these are the five precepts. Anatipata, Veramani, Sika Padang Samadhi Ami, Adina Dana, Veramani, Sika Padang Samadhi Ami, Kame Su, Michacharya, Veramani, Sika padang samadhi ami. Musawada veramani. Sika padang samadhi ami. Surya mirya maja pamadatana. Veramani. Sika padang samadhi ami. We undertake these trainings to refrain from harm, to refrain from taking what has not been given, to refrain from abuse of any kind of sexual activity, to refrain from false and harmful speech, and to refrain from intoxicants that cause heedlessness. You might feel this as a seed in the center of your heart, your heart center, chitta, or a seed in the earth, germinating, resting, generating. And uh, Sylvia Borstein offers this as a practice of personal inventory, moral inventory. So on behalf of myself and all beings, you can repeat that internally, on behalf of myself and all beings. I intend to refrain from consciously hurting anyone and that includes ourselves. And so in the silence here, you can just let that be known or repeated and just see in a relaxed mind what arises that might be needing amends or care or intention. I intend to refrain from consciously hurting anyone, including myself. We might notice the arising of ways we have caused harm to others, to ourselves, to our world. And this is not to feel shame or blame, but just to see if there's an opportunity for amends or intention going forward.
I intend to refrain from consciously hurting anyone. And then taking a releasing or relaxing breath if you need it. Reconnect with resting body with an awake presence. And then this second intention and precept on behalf of myself and all beings i intend to refrain from overtly or covertly taking what is not mine and we'll just rest with this in silence and openness allowing any moral inventory to arise and intentions for amends. Taking what is not mine. It's a novel, right?
And then releasing, relaxing breath. Feel connected to the ground again. Bring in some wakefulness if you're feeling sleepy. And on behalf of myself and all beings, I intend to be sure that my speech is kind as well as true. My inner speech to myself and outer speech with others. My speech in texting and resharing other people's words. So take some time to reflect here, bring curiosity to this intention and inventory. Are there places that need amends or need need more? generating a more intention speech kind and true And there may arise things we feel regret or remorse over. And this is a skillful part of the path and practice. We don't want it to be further fueled to become shame or blame. But just a regret at times harm has been caused, intentionally or unintentionally, and the intention going forward to be more mindful with this speech that is kind and true. And then a deeper or relaxing breath. Reconnect with the sensations of the ground and resting, resting in wakefulness. And then on behalf of myself and all beings, I intend to refrain from any abusive sexual activity.
Another releasing, relaxing, grounding breath. Bringing in wakefulness if there's too much sleepiness. And lastly, on behalf of myself and all beings, I intend to refrain from addictive behaviors that confuse my mind and lead to heedlessness. I'm going to take some time here to just allow in a relaxed mind whatever arises and see if anything needs awareness or shifting or amends. And a relaxing Grounding, restful breath, reconnecting to wakeful presence in the darkness, and this poem from Rosemary Witola Tromer. Almost to solstice. And even in these darkest days, in the darkest rooms, with the darkest thoughts and the darkest words, with the darkest songs in the dark full ears, And when the darkening dreams waits the darkest fear, even then there's a light and it never goes out. Even then when the eyes know only doubt, even then, even then there's a hand eager to spill, shine into our cup. And all we need to do is drink. Then pour a bit of shine for someone else. <laughs> Have some silence here to reflect and see what arises here of ways we can offer support and wise intention to others.
May these seeds that we plant, that germinate, serve the highest good for all beings everywhere. for your practice, encouragement to explore your own intentions or these precepts as intentions or the groundwork for intentions. Um, I'll put them down below in the recording as well and uh, practice with them daily so that they really um, bring forth the seeds we wish to bring into the world. <clears throat> and uh, it's cited in several different places in the suttas as the Buddha, particularly to his son Rahula, but other places as well around intention and uh, wise actions and speech and thought that um, we need to, to practice with it in these three different ways before, during, and after. And so this is uh, really the before part that we're paying attention to tonight, these intentions and, and uh, seeds, if you will, uh, so that they foster skillfulness um, during, <laughs> while we're speaking, while we're acting. Um, and uh, But also the practice that we did tonight was also a little bit um, after to allow some time for reflection to see, oh, is there regret or remorse that arises, which is part of wise effort also on the path. Um, not in a way that creates more self, like, oh, I can't believe I did that. And, uh, I'm so this, I'm so that, which of course is harmful to ourselves to speak that way, harmful speech. And, uh, but just to see, mm, yeah, there's some regret there and the intention going forward to be more skillful. So um, this is past, present, future reflections. Thank you for joining us here on this uh, YouTube practice for pre-solstice or solstice, um, winter solstice that is, and, um, and there won't be a recording next week, um, but then uh, there's a guest teacher for the week after that and then I will be back to join you, so hope to see you then. <laughs>